Hello, welcome to 30 Minutes. I'm Rick Anthony. The voice you're hearing in the background is that of the immortal Mario Lanza. Perhaps not known to many of you, particularly if you are younger, but for folks like me who grew up in the 50s and 60s, that voice meant everything. He was magnificent. He was a once in a lifetime. He was called the voice of the century, the 20th century. Uh, and today, uh, his memory, uh, his talent, is memorialized throughout the world here in Philadelphia with the Mario Lanza Institute and Museum down in uh, South Philadelphia. Uh, to, uh, on, on the occasion of the uh, 50th anniversary of the founding of the Institute, uh, we thought it would be a good idea to have the president of the Institute with us today to tell us about Mario Lanza, his life, his career, and the legacy he's left for young singers many of whom still aspire to be even close to what Mario Lanza was. With me today is Bill Ronan. Thank you very much nice for you. coming down. My and pleasure. And when I say coming down, uh, Bill came down from uh, New York City yes, Brooklyn, to New be York. with us today and to spend uh, uh, a half hour or so with us talking about the immortal Mario Lanza. My pleasure. Uh, as we always do, first of all, uh, since you're not a local, well, we introduce you to our locals. Uh, you're from out of, uh, out of state, out of city. Right. Uh, you've come from the Big Apple. Yes, I'm and from Brooklyn, And then we'll Brooklyn, make the connection with Philadelphia. Yeah. All right. You're, you're a native of? Brooklyn, New York. Brooklyn, New York. Right. You can probably hear that. Uh, <laughs> just a teensy little bit. Just a, a touch. Bit. It'll get worse. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Brooklyn, New York. Uh, but you've always had a love of opera, obviously. Yeah, well, I discovered Mario Alonzo when I was about seven years old. My, so my parents told me anyway. And mm -hmm. in those days, you could see him on TV more readily than you do. Yeah. Now you have to go to, you know, the cable. Yeah. And his records were played in the house along with all the other great singers. And not just opera, you know, I listened to mm -hmm. my sister liked the Beatles and, you mm -hmm. know, Love and Spoonful and all those groups. Yeah. And, you know, my mother liked the pop singers. Matt King Cole, Dean Martin, yes. Doris Day. So I heard, you know, I had a good, good, good grounding in music, yeah. good music. And I developed a love of opera going through my father's record collection. Those days were the 78s, the LPs, mm -hmm. and then, you know, of course, the CDs. But by, by the time CDs come out, I was hooked. Mm -hmm. So I, I listened to all the great stars, not just tenors, but, you know, everybody. Yes, yeah. But, but you're younger than I by more than a few years. Uh, but I remember back in the, the 50s uh, when he was just on the ascendancy, his career, Alonza. Right. And uh, just what a magnificent voice. Of course, everybody... Just as everyone tried to sound like Sinatra and, mm. and like Crosby, everybody tried to sound like Lanza, but nobody even came close. Well, it was that unique when, when, voice. When he was up yeah. in the stratosphere with oh. that note, oh my God. He had a tremendous top. He could sing anything from opera to the Great American Songbook, and he yes. did. You know, he did that on his radio show, he did it in his concerts. He didn't mm -hmm. just sing opera and Italian mm -hmm. songs like mm -hmm. a lot of the tenors did in those days. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was a huge voice with a brilliant top and golden mezzoboce. When, when I ask uh, people who are younger than I, maybe the generation below me, uh, if they ever heard of Lanza, in so many instances it's no, I, th I think I might have heard of his name before or heard him well, sing something. something. Like, my grandmother liked him. Yeah, exactly. My, my, right. my father. He's, he's not yeah. quite as old as Caruso, yeah. but yeah, wasn't that, that, and that is so bothersome to me that mm -hmm. uh, that talent uh, is lost to a couple of generations now. And I know that what you and your colleagues do at the Institute is to keep Mario Lanza's legacy alive. Yeah, well, people come into the museum, they can go back in time, yeah. see all the memorabilia, some, you know, similar to what's behind us. Where is the museum? It's at 712 Montrose Street in South Philly. Mm -hmm. It's a, right next to Mary, uh, St. Mary Magdalene de Pazzi Church. Mm -hmm. It actually used to be the rectory, now it's called Columbus House. Mm -hmm. And it's about a block and a half from where he was born at 636 Christian. And if you go to 636 Christian, you'll see the marker mm -hmm. that said he was born there. Mm -hmm. And you know, you can come in, you can see all the memorabilia or ephemera, it's called. And you know, there's posters, there's some costumes, there's personal articles, mm -hmm. different types of uh, you know, stuff they use to promote the movies, still some yes. the pictures and there's some jewelry mm -hmm. and other things. Uh, he's been called by some of the greats, the other greats, is the greatest singer, the greatest tenor mm -hmm. of the 20th century. Um, are there, is there still a, a large cadre of people in South Philadelphia who remember and who follow and support and are proud yeah. to be a part yeah, we, of When we have the Mario Alonzo Bowl every year, usually in November, uh -huh. uh, we, the people come. I mean, some, some of the people that, still knew, that knew him are still around, you know, some mm -hmm. of them aren't, but 
they come when they can or they'll stop in the museum. I mean, I don't know how many times somebody points, that's me in a picture, really? childhood picture Is with that ones right? school, one of those school pictures. Yeah. When he used to have like 75 people in, in the, mm -hmm. the, whole, the whole class. Or um, he was very benevolent and um, there's a young girl named Raffaella Fasano that he helped out. She was dying of Hodgkin's disease and mm -hmm. she was a big fan of his. So we went, somehow his mother got his home phone number in California. This is when he's a big mm -hmm. star now, 51, 52. And uh, she called and spoke to his uh, weight trainer and got him, they got in touch with Lanza and mm -hmm. uh, he brought her out and gave her a nice, you know, met all the stars yeah. and the kids and everything. And uh, see, you know, people don't, people don't know that about him. They figured just saying and that was it, you know. Yes. But I forget where I'm going with this. Um, <laughs> and uh, well, I was asking you to the, the extent to which the, the, the legacy still lives in South yeah. Florida. Well, but the, uh, the granddaughter of, you know, the mother came in yes. and she says, there's, there's grandma, the mother, mm -hmm. Raphael, his mother. And, you know, there's little things like that. People come in and see things, but people still remember. Yeah. I go into different shops in the Italian market and, you know, mm -hmm. so-and-so's mm -hmm. grandmother knew Lanza or the yes. family. I mean, Lanza's grandfather was in the, uh, he, he had a shop too. If you go by the 636 Christian Street, you'll see it's all bricked up, but that used to be the store. What, what type of shop? It was a... Uh, just a just a general store. General store. Yeah, yeah. kind of. Probably sell Italian, uh, you know, uh -huh. specialties and things. Uh -huh. Okay, um, there there is the institute in Philadelphia. Yeah. We'll come back to that and talk about the programs you run. Uh, but there are fan clubs, not chapters, but yeah. fan clubs around the, the world. The, yeah. Well, the one I run and started in New York is the Mario Lanza Soci Society mm -hmm. of New York. We put out a newsletter. And we, I try to cover things that are going on, like the mm -hmm. ball and stuff around. You know, if I can get somebody to write an article mm -hmm. that went to something in Europe, because I can't always go to things. And they put that, and they had his articles about his career, mm -hmm. anniversaries of films. And then we do an event in an Italian restaurant in New York City mm -hmm. every uh, three months. It's at Patsy's Restaurant. There's one coming up on September 15th. And uh, there's, But there's fan clubs all over the world. There's several in England. There's one in Italy. There's one in Russia. There's one in Japan. Russia? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. He's popular all over the world. It's a little harder for them to get things, yes. but they still love him. Yeah. And then, you know, they show the films. They dubbed him. His career was so short. It was yeah. fewer than 10 years. Yeah, his Hollywood career was from 49 to 59. Uh -huh. um, I mean, he had times where he had some problems with, with the studios where he yes. wasn't actually working. But, I mean, those films are shown. His, his first film was the, uh, that Midnight Kiss. The mid uh, Midnight Kiss. Yeah. And, and tell me the extent to which the storyline of that Midnight Kiss was based on fact. How was he discovered? Well, he was, uh, he was studying with Irene Williams, who was a great star in her own right. And she uh, knew that Serge Kusevitsky was going to be at the uh, Philadelphia Academy of Music on mm -hmm. Broad Street, rehearsing the, uh, the orchestra. And she arranged for him to have a, an audition with him. Mm -hmm. now, the way the publicity department put it out, he was delivering a piano, right. and he knew Kusevitsky was in the other room resting, and he just burst into Vesio Juba from Pagliacci, mm -hmm. but it was actually arranged. And in that midnight kiss, he's delivering a piano to Captain Grayson's, actually her grand, grandmother's house. Yes. And he's testing it out, and he mm -hmm. sings, and Captain Grayson comes in, and they're looking for a tenor for the mm -hmm. new opera company, and th that's how he yes. gets... He gets hooked up with them. Ethel Barrymore, wasn't it? Yeah. She was the, she the, was the dowager. Matriarch? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. So there was some parallel between yeah. the, the real story and the I story. I mean, but he, uh, he never really worked. He had some small jobs, but basically he studied from the time he was like about 16. His uh, father heard him singing along with Caruso records. Uh -huh. And his father was a great opera fan. He, had, he didn't have Caruso. He had all the great stars, mm -hmm. two of the 78s. It was, that was an occasion in those days. They'd buy a new uh, yes. 78, and the family yes. would sit down and listen to it. So Freddie, as he was called, because he wasn't born Mario Alonso. His full name was Alfredo, Alfredo. Arnold Cocosa. Cocosa, yes. And uh, yeah. Daddy heard the kids singing, and, you know, so he talked to the mother, and she had a voice, too, but her father wouldn't allow her, his daughter to go on the stage. Mm -hmm. So I guess Mommy lived through mm -hmm. the son in such, such a way. But she and the husband took to Roberto Scarduzzo, who was a local baritone, and, you know, he took him in her own stage. So I guess mommy lived through mm -hmm. the sun in such, such a way. But she and the husband took to Roberto Scarduzzo, who was a local baritone, and, you know, he took him in her room. They're staying outside, and they hear this gorgeous voice. And mm -hmm. the Scarduzzo comes out and says, your son's got a great voice, but he's kind of young. Mm -hmm. Wait a while. So the mother started working... Uh, 
the father was a disabled, 100 percent disabled from World War One, so the mm -hmm. mother was a breadwinner, mm -hmm. other than his disability. And so she worked a couple of jobs, and the, he started getting singing lessons. Right. I mean, a lot of people think he just got up and sang. I mean, there's a lot of work on it to that voice. No. Yeah. If you listen to some of his private recordings from 1940, you can hear the voice, but it needs work. Mm -hmm. And by the time he got in, with uh, Enrico Rosati in the 40s, mid 40s, he got the polish he needed. Did his training go beyond Philadelphia? Was he training? Yeah, well, Rosati was in New York. Okay. He. Um, but he never trained in Italy or no. any place outside of the U.S. It was basically a U.S. train, which was unusual in those days because yeah. generally to make a career in opera, you had to go mm -hmm. to Europe. Mm -hmm. And you study what's, whatever the famous mm -hmm. teacher was. I mean, nowadays you have Juilliard, Academy of Vocal Arts, yes. Curtis, and Temple, and a lot of other mm -hmm. you know, places where you can but learn it, here. It was this picture? This was the skyrocket. That was the beginning the of his career. Yeah. 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 And how many pictures did he make in his life? Well, technically he made eight. He made seven where he was actually in the film, and then he made the student prints where he pre recorded uh, yes. the track. But because he had a fight with the studio, mm -hmm. and he walked off the picture, and then they subsequently mm -hmm. you know, fired him and canceled his contract. Mm -hmm. They, they settled it by using his voice. So his voice is in eight pictures, but his body is only in seven. Yes. It sounds like he was a temperamental tenor, hmm. more than a little bit. He, he was like a pioneer for artistic control. Even some of the actors that weren't singers, like Cary Grant, they freelanced. Yeah. You had the studio system in those days, so basically you did what they told you. Yes. So you're out. When he sang at the Hollywood Bowl in 1947, which was a major turning point in his career, and Louis B. Mayer heard him, they signed him to, to mm -hmm. a seven-year contract. So that was basically, even though it said he could sing in the opera and do concerts, there mm -hmm. wasn't really any time. So that was basically the end of mm -hmm. him going into the opera, although he always wanted to keep trying to, but he never could. So he would have been in his late 20s at that point? He got signed when he was 26. 26. Yeah, and there's a recording of the Hollywood Bowl concert mm -hmm. complete, and he sounds fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for those who uh, may have never heard Lanza mm -hmm. uh, and would like to now, other than the, I guess you can get CDs. Oh, sure. But if you go on the internet. Yeah, there's plenty uh, of examples from recordings to actual video, there's clips from the movie, there's TV clips when he's singing live, which mm -hmm. are, are rare. And, and they're pretty good quality, too, even though they're kinescopes. Uh, Turner Classic Movies usually plays at least one or two of his films yeah. every year. Generally around his birthday, which is January 31st. January 31st? Yeah. And the one that I pray they will always present is this one. The Great Caruso. The Great Caruso. This is the most famous picture. Oh. My God, the voice. Even though it's not factual to a, you know, to a great degree, yeah. it's one great tenor paying tribute to another great yeah. tenor. It's like and a concert of fantastic music. Uh, it is. And, of course, Caruso was his idol. Yeah. yeah? Um, he always wanted to make you know, yeah. that kind of a tribute, and yeah. he had his opportunity. Yeah, it's, it's almost eerie. Mm. Um, how old was Caruso when he died? 48. 48? Yeah. Oh, well, he got sick in Italy, and they didn't yeah. have the same kind of medical treatment we yes. have here in those days. So, but but Lanza brought it on himself because of his lifestyle. Yeah, well, the problem Mostly was his eating style. He would put on a lot of weight. Yes, and then they want him to be real slim, like Clark mm -hmm. Gable and you know some of the other actors. Mm -hmm. And he'd go on his crash diet, mm -hmm. and he'd do like Rocky used to do. Only yeah. he'd wear a rubber suit. When you see Rocky train and then rush to fight Drago. He does it. The other guys use all kinds of sophisticated equipment. He's in the field. Yes. That's what Lanza is doing. He's chopping wood, but he's wearing mm -hmm. this rubber suit, so mm -hmm. he sweats profusely. Mm -hmm. That puts a great strain on a heart. And then over the years, he developed arterial sclerosis, and uh, he had phlebitis, where he was actually wearing leg stockings when he's singing concerts. Mm -hmm. If you watch the London Palladium, I mean, he's a little nervous because he's on live TV, and it had been a while. But he, you know, he lifts his leg up a few times, and I think it was the phlebitis mm -hmm. bothering him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it's, a lot, you know, it's, it's a tough life. I mean, this is a guy that used to work out constantly. Yes. But it's, you go up to, say, 240. I mean, he was about 5'9". You go up to 240, and then you've got to go down to 175, mm -hmm. 160 even. Mm -hmm. If you look at some pictures from Because Your Mind where he's got his shirt off, it's scary. But see, near the end of the picture, he's real thin and bone, skin and bone. It's a, really? Very I, scary. Oh. I, I, he, I went, he went to Ginger Rogers Ranch, and he worked out in the rubber suit, and he uh -huh. came back and... The producer says more. But, but that has to affect the voice. That's what he was worried about. Yeah. But see, but they, always, like I, they always did the pre-recording sessions early, so yeah. he would record when he was heavier because he mm -hmm. felt he sound fuller and better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it really makes a difference. I mean, if you look at Maria Callas, she mm -hmm. was skinny. I don't think her voice was any less full. But mm -hmm. in his mind, that's what he felt. You know, we were talking about the Academy of Vocal Arts uh, before, and 
it continues to amaze me. And this uh, music festival that uh, just recently concluded up where mm -hmm. we have a home in Buck Hill Falls and Skytop in the Pocono Mountains. And to see these little slips of, of girls, they, they can't oh. weigh 100 pounds. And they get up on stage and, oh, my God. Get it right in between the eyes. Oh, my word. And, and which seems to belie what obviously was a myth that like they have the, to be like the, the pounds, biggest yeah. voices yeah. came out of the biggest people. Uh, it amazes me in the competition because yeah. I, I can feel the, the, the airwaves hitting yeah. me in the face. Let's talk about the competition. So the uh, Mario Lanza Institute down on Christian Street in right. Philadelphia. Well, actually, it's on Montrose. Uh, what, what, what are the hours? <laughs> well, the museum is open from 11, 11.30 to 3.00. Okay. Okay. The, so the institute is not a teaching facility. I mean, mm -hmm. it, originally they might have wanted that, mm -hmm. which is probably why they called it an institute. I still get questions like that. I yeah. said, no, no, we give out scholarships. You went through our competition. And, you know, if you win the competition, you get a scholarship. Mm -hmm. We give out four prizes. Um, mm -hmm. It's open to all singers, all voice categories. How long has that been going on? Well, probably since the beginning. I mean, I'd have to. Really? To try. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But that was Lanza's it, dream. He wanted to start a foundation to help young singers. It used to be singers. a big event. Uh, wasn't yeah. Pavarotti somehow associated with it years ago? I don't believe so. He had his own. Um, he had his own thing contest. that he used to do yeah. out of the Academy of Music, where yes. the winners would sing in two different operas with him or something. Yes. I remember seeing that on TV uh -huh. about 30 years ago. But I know of uh, only recently I became aware of two people uh, who are winners of the Mario Lanza contest. Mm -hmm. It wasn't so much the money as the prestige of competing yeah. and winning. Yeah, Many so. of them are went on to the, uh, well, would they have gone on to the Academy of Vocal Arts? They were or would probably they have at the been Academy already of Vocal been Arts. Graduates, so. We get, uh, now usually they're still at the school. Uh -huh. We get people from all over the country, sometimes Canada or Mexico. They usually come from the, you know, not just the big schools, but, mm -hmm. you know, other schools or private teachers even. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But we've had, we've had a good number from uh, Academy of Vocal Arts, mm -hmm. Curtis, too. And not just tenors. Oh, it's all voice categories. Yeah. I mean, Eileen Perez, who was with them for a while, while back, we had her when she was 22, mm. and she was still a student. Mm -hmm. I mean, and now she's winning the Richard Tucker Award, and yeah. all the doors are opening. I mean, it's nice to see that. You see yeah. them, that she's on the cover of Opera Nose with some of the other winners. But there's, there's, uh, we were talking about Cody Austin, who's mm -hmm. a graduate of the yeah, Academy he, of Vocal Arts, but yeah. also won. He won our award in 2007. Yeah, who's, who's got a fabulous Fantastic voice, voice ringing top, the kind of tenor you want to hear. He's yes. a good-looking young man. When he goes upstairs, oh, on yeah. the C, there's a C, and then what's above the C? There's a D. A D? Yeah, not everybody hits a D, but he can. Can Cody hit a D? Yeah. I heard him hit the C in Be My Love. Mm. Uh, yeah, he, he rocks the audience when he ago. hits those top notes. Yeah. Fabulous that's that's the thing about a tenor. I mean, even Anna Moffo, who came from Philadelphia, yeah. said that in a documentary about Alonzo. When a soprano hits a high C, it's exciting, but when a tenor hits it, it's thrilling. But yeah. there's something like animalistic about it, yeah. like, a, like a cry in a jungle. Mm -hmm. and it's just, but it's not a natural voice for a man. It's mm -hmm. usually the baritone or a bass. Mm -hmm. But when you get into the upper extension and then when it's really rich and mm -hmm. thrilling, it, it's, it's unbelievable. In a, in a way, he had such a sad life because of yeah. what, he, what he could have been, because mm -hmm. we'll never know. But his, uh, he, had, he was married early, young. Yeah, he married right after World War II. Uh -huh. He and met his bride, it was an army buddy, when he was uh, touring in Wing Victory. Uh -huh. He uh, was in special services. He was in the army, he got drafted. He was all set to start a career and he got drafted. Mm -hmm. He got the greetings letter. And, um, but he, he buddied up with somebody that was in special services and they, uh, they, they kept him in there. He was in the military police for a while. Mm -hmm. And he would do troop shows around the yeah. country, he was in Wing Victories and something else called On the Beam, mm -hmm. where he actually would sing an aria or something. Uh, Wing Victory, mm -hmm. they, when they cast him, he was, they had already, it was a lot of famous actors in that too, mm -hmm. Evan O'Brien and, and um, some great tenors. I mean, he was in the chorus, and there was some really mm -hmm. great tenors in the chorus, like Eugene Conley and some of the, some of the other stars that came, went to the Met after mm -hmm. that. And he met Betty, his, his buddy Bert's wife. He met her and mm -hmm. uh, he saw a picture and uh, he wanted to meet her and they, they fell in love. Mm -hmm. And had four children? Yes. Only one of whom is still alive? Yeah, Alyssa living? is the second daughter is still alive. Uh, yeah. His first daughter, who had a very brief singing career, mm -hmm. um, she was a victim of a hit and run, mm -hmm. and his two sons mm -hmm. had heart attacks. Oh, my. One was 37, the other one was 55. And his wife followed him just, what, seven months, six months after yeah, he died? 1960, uh, yeah, 1960, about six months, yeah. Yeah, tragic. Yeah. Again, the, the knock on Lanza, I, I remember hearing, was that, uh, even if he had lived and gone on with his career, because he was he, he was a, kind of a pop singer, mm. that he would have never ended up on the stage of the Metropolitan or any other 
of the major opera houses mm -hmm. in the world. What's your take on that? I don't agree with that. I mean, he had the goods to be a legitimate opera singer if he wanted to. I mean, it would be a little hard at the point in, say, 59 when he died. I'm assuming his health is okay and he can yeah. get out and sing without any physical problems with his heart. He's the great Mario Lanza now. Where do you start? Yes. Do you go to La Scala first or you go right to the men? I mean, mm -hmm. you can't go to the provinces and learn your craft. I mm -hmm. mean, he, his only real opera appearances were in 1948 in New Orleans and Mount Butterfly. Mm -hmm. Other than that, he just did concerts. Yes. So, I mean, he wanted to sing in the opera. He had offers to sing in the Rome Opera. Mm -hmm. When he went to record his last film, the soundtrack, for, for the first time with the Rome Opera, they had never heard him. They figured he was a, you know, mechanical tenor. Yes. Cranked up tenor. Yeah. And he did, I think the first selection was also Lomeo, and the conductor, who was his conductor, Kalinikos, he said they all looking at each other like, you know, this guy's real, the real thing. Yeah. yeah. Marilyn Hood told me once when I just remember that. She said she was in the chorus in the Hollywood Bowl when he did a concert with Captain Grayson for MGM. Mm -hmm. And she says Lonzo was the real deal. Mm -hmm. I mean, I hear that from a lot of people that heard him. Mm -hmm. He could have been. I mean, it would have been real hard if he'd have made the Caruso movie and stopped. Yeah. And just, or when he had the problem with the student friends, if he, you know, because he got depressed after that, because everything was, yeah. he was this big star, and then all of a sudden they took it away from him. If he'd have, you know, pursued the opera, I think he mm. would have been all right, especially with the richness of the voice oh. that he had in the mid-50s. Uh, how old was he when he died? 38. 38, yeah, yeah. yeah. Young man. And the two movies, he, when he left the country with his family and moved to Italy right. after the MGM the and Southern the, Hills of the, Rome the fiasco. And, uh, they uh, went light on the opera on that because the previous film was, light, was yeah. full of opera, Serenade. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't care for those two movies. He didn't look good. He didn't he was, sound he was, good. He was sick. And, and you, could, you could tell in at least one of them where they really they dubbed in the music. There was, it sounded like a studio production. Well, it, it, I don't know what, what they did in, in the Italian cinema at those days. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. But they just were not up to what you would have expected. The, the, the last film, he, he sounds better. I mean, mm -hmm. he was, it was done in 1958, I believe, mm -hmm. the one with Jaja Gabor mm -hmm. for the first time. <laughs> but, I mean, his Festival Juba was phenomenal on that. And the... Uh, the triumphal march from Aida, yeah. which is too many distant shots. But yeah, Let's go story. back to the Institute. So the Institute is a real place and with all the memorabilia from his life and career. You come in, you'll see all kinds of posters, pictures, okay. some costumes. And it exists to... Uh, Perpetuate his memory and to, you know, to give out scholarships. Yeah. To keep his dream alive, which but, is but our the programs tag. you have, in addition to the annual competition... Yeah. Well, we have the Mario Lanza Ball. Yeah, the uh, ball. We do, do events in an Italian restaurant sometimes. What, when is the ball? The ball is November 4th at the Double Tree Hotel on Broad Street, right across the street from, from the Academy from of the Music. Academy. Okay. And yes. what will that feature? That has, it opens with a cocktail hour, and then the ball starts. We have uh, Elaine Malbin, the famous soprano, who mm -hmm. also recorded with Lanza mm -hmm. when she was a baby, um, to uh, be our MC. Uh, we hope to have a few special guests, which I can't mention now because mm -hmm. it's, it's not confirmed. The scholarship finals will take place in the beginning. It's a dinner dance. We have the wonderful Tony D Orchestra. Mm -hmm. And uh, there'll be some video highlights of Lanza from Because Your Mind, because it's 60 years since that was released. And uh, well, there'll be like a slideshow with him singing, probably Because Your Mind, which I'll be making up probably this week. Mm -hmm. now, people come from all over the world. They renew friendships. They make new ones. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it's an all in tribute to Mario Lanza. And yes. Celebrating his life and career and keeping the dream alive with the uh, scholarship program. Uh, s because you don't have sufficient funding, you're not able to... Uh, really do much more in the way of education, ongoing education. No, we would like to centers. actually have training program. Yes, which but you that, don't that, have. No, we, you know, that involves accreditation and then yes. you know, to get teachers, which would probably be the easiest thing. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of former singers or singers that teach too. Mm -hmm. and, you know, the, and then the facility is that we rent a few rooms in the, in the rectory, uh -oh. so we would need an actual building. Okay. But I mean, I think at, at some point the board years ago wanted to mm -hmm. do something like that, but it never materialized. Mm -hmm. You, you live and breathe this. I know you right. do. Uh, as, uh, and it's a labor of love because you're not compensated. No, we're all volunteers. Uh, all volunteers. But you come down from Manhattan s several times a year because of the board mm -hmm. and other activities. What could be done to reintroduce or to introduce Lanza to a generation that doesn't even know his name? Well, I mean, concerts and tribute to him can be mm -hmm. done and we would sh actually show him not just uh, I mean people do have done concerts but you know it's so-and-so singing Mario Lanza songs mm -hmm. great you know but you need to see him mm -hmm. but once they see him and hear him even if they just hear him it's gonna grab people mm -hmm. they're gonna hear people hear things that they never heard 
mm -hmm. in today's singers, but mm -hmm. not all of them have that kind of, uh, mm -hmm. they grab you by the throat kind of voice. Well, what, um, beyond Lanza, do you, have, do you have a sense of how popular opera is among young people? The, I think, I mean, when I go to the Gen, Metropolitan Gen Opera, y. it's, it's uh, pretty uh, full of young people. Uh -huh. you know, I mean, young, young people, but they have, they have programs where they bring students yes. to the rehearsals. And so when I go to rehearsals, there's always like several schools there. And, you know, the Mets doing the uh, HDs in the theaters. So that's, I mean, some yes. people can't afford to take it to the Met or mm -hmm. come to the Mets. So, yes. you know, you go to your local theater, yeah. and it's not, it's not exactly the same, but it's as close as mm -hmm. you're going to get. And you see international superstars, and, mm -hmm. and norm, sometimes they're not normal productions, but, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. it, it, it interests people. Is he better known outside of the country? His his legacy, his he's very his popular history. in England. Is he? Um, but there's two clubs there. There's one in Ireland. So, uh, I mean, stuff stuff like YouTube is. Uh, yes. He's all over YouTube. I mean, if you want to see some of the things I mentioned, just go to YouTube. Yeah. The live things. And this show will be on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, this so, I mean, if you just just go to Alonza video or audio, mm -hmm. what do you want to call it? You look at the, the number of hits or clicks. Yeah. There's a lot. But I told you I've been frustrated, probably because I don't know what I'm doing. I've been frustrated I because know. I haven't been able to find the, uh, the soundtrack for The Great Caruso. I can find it's pieces of it, but not the full... Uh, it has been put out probably in England. It's on a CD. Uh, I mean, you might find it on a place like an auction site like eBay. Mm -hmm. um, it's not something that we have at the museum, because mm -hmm. we can't always carry everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a, there's a currency conversion rate, which mm -hmm. makes it you know, not worth selling to raise money. To, to raise money, that, that's an interesting question. Well, I, I read, I read yeah. recently or saw something that Mary Alonza, I beg your pardon, that Marilyn Monroe, 50 years, I think it's 50 years after her death, that her estate still receives most recently $27 million. Wow. Uh, she's an institution. Huh. Lanza was an institution hmm. but isn't any longer. Uh, is, is there any semblance of that in, in Lanza's case? Is, is there a continuing one flow of, his, of money from... Yeah, it's not that much, but, you know, they get a, the, whoever gets royalties now, Yes. I mean, inherited from the, the children or whatever, Right. They every time they put out a CD, there's a part of that goes to the royalties. So they, they still, mm -hmm. I mean, he, he's still making money and he's dead 53 years. Mm -hmm. But but not for the Institute? No, that goes to whoever the assigns are. Whoever's got the royalties, yeah. right. We should talk to those people. Hmm. See if we can yes. get them to make a donation. That's nice. <laughs> yes. Anybody else out there would like to make a donation <laughs> too. <laughs> uh, remind the audience again about the, the gala and how they can get tickets and the website and how they can learn okay. more. Well, the quickest way to find anything out about the Mario Alonzo Institute is go to www.marialonzainstitute.org and you'll see the information for the Mario Alonzo Ball Weekend, which is November 3rd and 4th. In Philadelphia, we're doing an event at the High Note Cafe on Saturday the 3rd, a Mario Alonzo tribute dinner, and then the Mario Alonzo Ball is on Sunday the 4th. And if you can't go to either of those two events, we do have a museum open house on Sunday, uh, November 4th, about 11.15, right after the Mass at uh, St. Mary Magdalene de Pazzi. So come in and join us for some coffee and cake. Uh, also on our website is the, uh, our catalog of uh, available items from the museum, which are used to raise money for the scholarship program and to keep the museum open. And if you're interested, if you're a young singer and you're between the ages of 28, 21 and 29 and uh, you feel up to our competition, come down and uh, compete. Everything you need to know is on the uh, programs page under scholarships. Anything you can't find, just email me, but my email address is right there too. Uh, that's terrific. I hope you get a response to that. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about funding though. You, how do you fund the scholarship awards? Well, we've been, in the past few years, we've been getting grants, but uh, people make donations. I mean, anything from a dollar up. Mm -hmm. I mean, somebody says, or if somebody wants to sponsor a scholarship, we, uh, we take individual sponsorships from $500 up. You mm -hmm. can uh, contact us through the website. Um, mm -hmm. You're allowed to name the scholarship after someone if you'd like. So I could have the Richard J. Anthony Sr. or the Anthony Family's uh, Mary Alonzo Scholarship? Yeah. And for we'll $500? Be dollars? Yeah. All right. could do that uh -huh. and um, anybody else that would like to do it it's it's, it's very simple uh -huh. and it's you know you're not, you're not going to get any goods and services so the all the whole amount is tax yes. deductible under the, under the IRS right and you'll be doing good for some young singer and you can maybe mm -hmm. one day you'll see that singer that won your award up on the Metropolitan mm -hmm. Opera stage or on the Philadelphia Opera mm -hmm. 
I mean, it mm -hmm. does me good when I see the kids in opera nose and, you know, they're doing yeah. good. But I remember them when they were just starting out. And yeah. Maybe they had a few problems and it was just the scholarship money helped them with the teacher sure. or something. Yep. Or if you just like to make a donation in general, or to maybe be a sponsor for the Mario Alonzo Ball, contact me. Well, I could listen to him all day long. Um, uh, just a marvelous, marvelous voice. Un unique in every way, as we were discussing mm. before. Pavarotti was a really good technician. Absolutely. Beautiful voice, mm. but it wasn't Lanza. Uh, Domingo, wonderful voice, mm. but it's not Lanza. It doesn't have the f and, and Domingo has, has more passion than Pavarotti mm. did. Both of them are big fans of Lanza. I know. And because of Lanza, they yes, became opera they singers. I'm very free, free to say that. Yeah, well. Thank you very much for being here. Great, and thank you for having I, me. I appreciate it, and I hope that we will have been instrumental in introducing another generation to Mario Alonza, the voice, the greatest voice of the 20th century. Until next time, this is 30 Minutes. I am Rick Anthony. Take good care of yourselves, and check it out, Mario Alonza. <laughs>